breathing. Um, I'm going to now um, discuss another of our artists. Um, actually, uh, possibly, if I am right, our oldest artist, who oldest living, is he older? Was he older than Elizabeth? Will? Oldest living artist. He was our oldest living artist um, when he was invited. Um, and I'm for those of you who would be unfamiliar with KG Subramanian, who's a towering figure within within the Indian context. I just wanted to kind of mark out um, some aspects of his life and his practice as we have witnessed it in Documenta 14. It is no wonder that KG Subramanian, while initially training in economics at, Ch in, at Chennai, an active member of the student movement and the Quit India movement in the 1940s, eventually ended up studying and teaching at poet philosopher Rabindranath Tagore's Shantiniketan Kalabhavana campus, which he described as a non-institutional institution where a community of people who, who reacted to one another, including teachers who were not pretending to teach. That's a quote. However, this step that evolved into a wholly committed immersion in the arts, in mentorship, in writing and cultural activism arose soon after he was jailed for picketing the secretariat and wasn't allowed to attend further studies in economics at that time in any state institutions across India that was still under British rule. His brother had therefore chosen to write to Nandalal Bose at Shantiniketan with the hope that Subramanian would still be accepted into this institution. With Documenta 14 in Athens, um, at the Athens Fine Arts School, we displayed volumes of Vishwabharati News, the key periodical of the university, which is also a, a repository of its approach to the curriculum, its inter its, sorry, as the curriculum as communal form, the development of a rural e ecological paradigm in the arts, its internationalism as well as self-reliance as twined tools of worlding during colonial rule, illustrated with graphic artworks of artist teachers and students of Kalabhavana, while also assembling meticulous itineraries of poetry, public meetings, announcements that included the reports on the national movement as communique, for instance. In September 1932, when Gandhi began his hunger strike from a jail cell in Bombay against the British government's decision to separate India's electoral system by caste, in Vishwabharati News, there was an item called Wire to Mahatma Gandhi, in which Tagore wrote, it is worth sacrificing precious life for the sake of India's unity and her social integrity, though we cannot anticipate what effect it may have upon our rulers who may not understand its immense importance for our people, and continued. During a visit to Shantiniketan in February 2016, sitting on a porch together with members of our team, K.G. Subramanian began to deliberate on the future role of cultural institutions and the continuing quest for artistic pedagogy to remain a radical social experiment. Remarkably, he also chose to tell us about how Tagore communicated with Mahatma Gandhi at the close of his lifetime. And in, his, in this retelling, Subramanian's own frailty became evident. He said, when Gandhi visited here in 1940, Tagore was a little worried about his own health, and he is supposed to have been struggling with the question of how to keep this institution going. But he didn't have the courage to talk to him about it. So as far as we read in the books, Tagore wrote on a piece of paper and then placed it in Gandhi's hand. It said, this institution is like a boat that carries my life's best treasure. So try to look after it. It seemed a kind of a hidden message um, to us as well. Some crucial lessons learned because just a few months later, the great artist and teacher passed on. 
The war of relics, which traveled to several cities across India, including to Kochi Muzaris Biennale. This is something important that I wanted to point out that uh, this is the work I'm talking about. It's, it's much larger. This is a detail. Um, but that, you know, we, we were not after being the first to capture a certain work and, and, and sort of share it um, gloriously um, within, within the international sphere, but rather to actually think quite closely on what seemed most integral and most important in, in a kind of a larger sense also to the community back home. Um, and, and this work, um, and I'd like to just share why this work was important firstly to the artist and to the communities that it initially traveled to before it was exhibited in Emst um, at Athens. And, uh, and this is a view of some of the younger audiences enjoying the work. This was the final mural uh, that was made up of 16 panels and measuring 2.7 into 10.9 meters. This work is inscribed with a sense of mobility, operating like a Japanese screen that can be shown in many different ways. The artist has earlier realized iconic murals in Shantiniketan, working on techniques such as sand casting, and also extending his mural making to state buildings in India such as the Jabindrale uh, Auditorium in Lucknow, which is in this case a representation in terracotta of Tagore's play, The King of the Dark Chamber. And what's interesting is that this mural follows two kinds of narrative passages. Um, one, which is um, an oratory script, um, and the other as a theat theatrical production. So each becomes sort of plotted within the mural and it was within the theatrical production that uh, Subramanian was involved in set and costume design. Painted soon after K.G. Subramanian had a major surgery at the age of 88, he refers to the War of the Relics, uh, recollecting the violence that broke out during the spread of the Buddha's relics when his lessons of ahimsa, nonviolence, were cast aside in favor of fierce possession. And from that, he links to a continual mapping of blood feuds that came in the name of religion, ethnicity, and communal divides that we are also still talking about. The art historian and pedagogue R. Shivakumar has noted how this mural carries multiple frames as a structural device to render a spatial polyphonic meaning. Voicing, as, as the artist said, the beastly features of human behavior where humans turn into monsters with many heads and many arms. So here we see animal hybrids, royal battlegrounds, colonial hunters, war tanks, two warrior goddesses, all within that black and white scenography. In Castle at the Neue Galerie, we are showing a, a work that I sort of thought of as a, as a kind of a companion to this um, in, in dialogue with Adam which is anatomy lesson, a series of terracotta reliefs and paintings that are shaped as a warning call to our society in collective trouble, uh, as a sort of a body in pieces, not any full bodies at all here. The artist also talked of uh, and wrote of the art craft continuum as a larger fluid language system, and yet, how it is important not to become precious about traditional forms, but rather to consider these living techniques as a way of responding to one's time and developing an understanding of these as a spectrum of language. He has also remarked that indigenous making is an attitude to the world and how it has been, while also equally acknowledging the many turns of modernity. In considering the role of craftspeople working at various levels on conceiving and constructing a commonly built heritage, he states, traditional artists in many cases have a better sense of the environment than modern artists working in their studios as they develop more inclusive way of looking at creativity. Different artists recall um, the stages of K.G. Subramanian's life and involvement in the cultural field so for instance, Jogen Chaudhary, um, who still teaches at Chantaniketan, 
has addressed his role as a designer, recalling his years working at the Handloom Board's Weaver's Service Center when there were brilliant designs, textiles that came into being, and also his skills as a toy maker. But this all happened while he was also teaching at Shanti Niketan and then further for several years at the MSc University in Baroda. So just to again mention that actually he was a teacher to other artists who are in Documenta. So what we're looking at is a sort of generational scheme. So you have this artist who then taught Nilima Sheikh, who then taught Nikhil Chopra. And so there's sort of this entire, um, uh, maybe a, an intuitively built scheme to understand mentorship. Manida, as he was called by his friends, students, and colleagues, shared of his compulsion to draw as a daily practice. His scribbles were a multivalent universe of mythological beings, social commentary, ceremonial scenes, annotations of rural labor and animal life, a mode of making sense and keeping sensibility alive as an imbibed logic and through the generous publicness that he cultivated around him. I'm going to now um, share a video, um, which, is, which is part of a longer interview that was given to us um, by uh, the Seagull Foundation for the Arts, to whom we are very grateful, um, where the artist in, is in conversation with Ina Puri. There may be some references that are kind of culturally um, cited, but I, I hope you enjoy the clip nonetheless. My father used to recite certain things as soon as he got up. So, there was one sort of a sloka which used to end or begin, I don't remember now. Nityotsavam bhavatyasam. So that is, every day should be like a festival. Really speaking, there is something of it in, as a part of our culture. And we think that everything that we do, is um, sacramental of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, you and then the other way is that the other day I was writing a sort of a review of Ram Ramila Tapper's book by somebody. Every time we always say that the Indian people are unhistorical, they don't sort of a, but then whenever you start a ritual, you have a set of mantras which say in which continent you are from and what time you are in. Of course, all those might be mythological, but then they have already put you on the date path. This other. Yes. That, um, in fact, this Nityotsam of is a head part of my. I know. All of us have something to say about the world which is not very pleasant. Things are unhappy, I mean, so people fight with each other, they pull each other down. But then, on the whole, if you don't love the world, you can't love, sort of make the world any better. But if you are all the time being overcritical about everything, so that is the thing that happens. I myself am critical about various things. But when you come to the bottom, it is just uh, that being in the world is a celebration of sorts. Santhani Kizan I am talking about is probably not the place where you are, but a dream place. Mm. It's a place which uh, probably Tagore thought of at one time. And in today's circumstances, Santhani Kizan, what Tagore thought of, would be, in my version, he wanted it to be an institute that will train people for a world of peace. So it should be a sort of a university of peace studies. Tagore wanted that life should be celebrated and without any reference to ritualistic relationship and worship and things of that kind, life should be celebrated as nature should be celebrated. So that people through these various festivals, they will come to know each other better and the uh, environment. There are 365 days in the year. 
And the kind of paintings I do, I can do one a day. Yeah. Because I don't do it, because then it will become too trite. Mm. The only thing is that uh, when somebody is as old as I am, yeah. well, doing work of this kind is as essential for your living as your breathing. So, well, that happened. That is the age. You know, thinking in terms of your own personal life, there are various mythologies that we live amidst. Mm. Mm. So for me, many of these little bits and pieces which relate a story, mythological story, to the life around mm. is a very interesting sort of a trend. True that uh, whenever I sit, I doodle. Mm. Mm. I doodle either in, on my sketch pad, I doodle in the mind. So it is happening all the time, mm. that is the And these are like that. And really speaking, these are a certain way to a kind of a visual calligraphy of sorts. I mean, you are trying to sort of... Yeah. Now, that's a thing that I have learned from Shantaniketan. Uh, I suppose as you grow older, <laughs> you like to see the world colorful. And... Um, I always remember that he, as you grow older, you remove yourself from the air. There is less of your ego interest in what you see, and you see it exactly what it is. So when the light shines through the window on the greenery around, it looks almost like a sort of a brocade of sorts, this side. Now, this has been happening for quite a few years. When I did a series of paintings, uh, which uh, are now referred to as the Inayat Khan series, mm -hmm. that was that, that here I am, like Inayat Khan, losing the weight of my body away. <laughs> oh, I don't look like that, of course. <laughs> uh, but then um, the world around is wonderful. Thank you, Natasha, for bringing Subramajan.